An unspeakable horror seized me. There was a darkness, then a dizzy, sickening sensation of sight that was not like seeing. I saw a line that was no line, space that was not space. I was myself, and not myself. When I could find voice, I shrieked loud in agony. Either this is a madness, or it is hell. It is neither, calmly replied the voice of the sphere. It is knowledge. It is three dimensions. Open your eye once again and try to look steadily. I looked, and behold, a new world. There stood before me, visibly incorporate, all that I had before inferred, conjectured, dreamed of perfect circular beauty. What seemed the centre of the stranger's form lay open to my view. Yet I could see no heart, lungs, nor arteries, only a beautiful harmonious something, for which I had no words, but you, my listeners in spaceland, would call it the surface of the sphere. Prostrating myself mentally before my guide, I cried, How is it, O divine ideal of consummate loveliness and wisdom, that I see thy inside, and yet cannot discern thy heart, thy lungs, thy arteries, thy liver? What you think you see, you see not, he replied. It is not giving to you, nor to any other being, to behold my internal parts. I am of a different order of beings from those in Flatland. Were I a circle, you could discern my intestines. But I am a being, composed, as I told you before, of many circles, the many in the one, called in this country, a sphere. And just as the outside of a cube is a square, so the outside of a sphere represents the appearance of a circle. Bewildered though I was by my teacher's enigmatic utterance, I no longer chafed against it, but worshipped him in silent adoration. He continued with more mildness in his voice. Distress not yourself if you cannot at first understand the deeper mysteries of Spaceland. By degrees they will dawn upon you. Let us begin by casting back a glance at the region whence you came. Return with me a while to the plains of Flatland, and I will show you that which you have often reasoned and thought about, but never seen with a sense of sight. A visible angle. Impossible! I cried, but, the sphere leading the way, I followed as if in a dream, till once more his voice arrested me. Look yonder! and behold your own pentagonal house, and all its inmates. I looked below, and saw with my physical eye all that domestic individuality which I had hitherto merely inferred with the understanding. And how poor and shadowy was the inferred conjecture in comparison with the reality which I now behold. My four sons, calmly asleep in the northwestern rooms, my two orphan grandsons to the south, the servants, the butler, my daughter, all in their several apartments. Only my affectionate wife, alarmed by my continued absence, had quitted her room and was roving up and down in the hall, anxiously awaiting my return. Also the page, aroused by my cries, had left his room, and under pretext of ascertaining whether I had fallen somewhere in a faint, was prying into the cabinet in my study. All this I could see now, not merely in fur, and as we came nearer and nearer, I could discern even the contents of my cabinet, and the two chests of gold, and the tablets of which the sphere had made mention. Touched by my wife's distress, I would have sprung downward to reassure her, but I found myself incapable of motion. Trouble not yourself about your wife, said my guide. She will not be long left in anxiety. Meantime, let us take a survey of Flatland. Once more I felt myself rising through space. It was even as the sphere had said, the further we receded from the object we beheld, the larger became the field of vision. My native city, with the interior of every house and every creature therein, lay open to my view in miniature. We mounted, higher and low, the secrets of the earth, the depths of the mines and inmost caverns of the hills, were bared before me. Awestruck at the sight of the mysteries of the earth, thus unveiled before my unworthy eye, I said to my companion, Behold, I am become as a god. 
For the wise men in our country say that to see all things, or as they express it, omnividence, is the attribute of God alone. There was something of scorn in the voice of my teacher as he made answer, Is it so indeed? Then the very pickpockets and cutthroats of my country are to be worshipped by your wise men as being gods, for there is not one of them that does not see as much as you see now. But trust me, your wise men are wrong. Aye. Then is omnividence the attribute of others besides gods? Sphere. I do not know. But if a pickpocket or a cutthroat of our country can see everything that is in your country, surely that is no reason why the pickpocket or cutthroat should be accepted by you as a god. This omnividence, as you call it, is not a common word in Spaceland. Does it make you more just, more merciful, less selfish, more loving? Not in the least. Then how does it make you more divine? I, more merciful, more loving. But these are the qualities of women, and we know that a circle is a higher being than a straight line, in so far as knowledge and wisdom are more to be esteemed than mere affection. Sphere, it is not for me to classify human faculties according to merit. Yet many of the best and wisest in Spaceland think more of the affections than of the understanding, more of your despised straight lines than of your belauded circles. But enough of this. Look, yonder, do you know that building? 